Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. I hope you all are doing well. If you guys have seen my other video, we did a will it run on this LT2000 Craftsman. And we were successful in getting this engine up and running. We went through, basically got everything operational on here, but we were still running into some issues. I tried to rebuild the bearings and the deck spindles. They were still noisy. That was one of the issues we had. And also I went through uh, I believe twice trying to get the carburetor cleaned and not surging anymore and still having some issues at high throttle So I've gone ahead and ordered some parts. I'll show you all that here in a minute, but we're also going to be doing a Oil change on this. We're going to end up doing a carburetor swap new fuel filter new spark plug Just basically going through everything on the machine. We're going to be rebuilding the mowing deck with new spindles and new blades there might be a couple other little things, maybe greasing the steering and stuff like that. Let me take you guys over to the shop. I'll show you all the new parts I got and then we're going to get started. All right, so here are the parts I ordered. It looks like we've got, I think we've got about $100 worth of parts here. I ordered a 810 rebuild kit for this mowing deck. I just took the uh, part number for it and matched it up. And so we've got uh, two new spindles which come basically fully assembled and they also have the grease fittings on these uh, the only issue that I had was that these do not come with hardware so I had to run up to tractor supply this morning and get some hardware I'll go over what the specs are on this but I got some grade 8 bolts and some locking nuts we have a new carburetor a new oil filter a fuel shutoff a fuel filter and new plug and it came with the air filter but it's not going to be the right one for our application unfortunately so i'm still going to have to get one of those we should be in pretty good order after getting all this stuff installed so i'm going to go back out there and show you guys removing the mowing deck because i want to take that off first then we're going to pull it into the shop get all of the carb work done on it and fuel system and we'll also do the oil change and then uh, outside the shop we'll go ahead and do the deck rebuild and then we'll get everything together so let's jump to it I did go ahead and drop the deck down to the lowest setting on these you have the one mount right here cotter pin so take that out and then there is a rod in this arm that comes out you also have your engagement cable there is a pin on that take that pin out and then pull outwards on the cable and that will release it from the groove that it sits in and then you can pull the actual end of the spring uh, there is a front mount that comes off that just holds your front and on the other side we just have the same type setup with the rod and the bracket and that is it and then this deck um, then you'll raise up the arm and then you can just go ahead and slide the deck out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything unhooked and we'll get this slid out and get the tractor pulled in the shop. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the hood off and then I'm gonna run it for a minute, show you guys what it sounds like and then we're gonna get that carb swapped. All right, I did have this running earlier, pulled it across the yard, it was surging. Um, so we shouldn't need choke, but you guys will be able to hear what I'm talking about. It's surging even at the lower end now and on the high side let me get y'all set up on the tripod and let's get this thing swapped out all right so first thing we're gonna do is turn the fuel off but normally you just need to get a pair of pliers on there just put this up out of the way now we will disconnect our anti-backfire then we have two 
seven sixteenths. There is a breather hose on the back side. You can just pull right off. Now this is what we loosened up that top for earlier so that we can slide that intake tube right out. And now we have these two studs which need a deep well 5 sixteenths. This will now slide out. So now we have the choke arm, which we need to slide out and get this spun around. We can take the choke rod off because it needs to go on the new one. It's on the outer hole. And then we have our governor um, assist spring and also the actual rod. So we'll just turn this gently. You don't want to break anything or bend anything. And that is it right there. So now, we're just going to go right in reverse order. I'm not sure on this one if I'm going to have to clip this uh, tab. Some of these carburetors are made for several different applications, so you can see that this one does not have it. And I'm wondering if it's going to hit the bottom of the shroud. We're going to find out. If I need to, though, I'll just get a set of side cutters and just clip that tab. We'll go ahead and get this into place. Let me check to see. We should be good on the clearance there. I'm going to run these in with this, but be extremely careful. I'm going to use a quarter inch uh, ratchet to get them in the rest of the way because you're using metal screws that are going into plastic, and I don't want to break the intake manifold but I do want a good seal so we'll just snug those up do not over tighten unless you want to break something solenoid back on there I'm just gonna turn the key switch all right I can hear the solenoid working That is in place. Slide my breather hose back on. That's just a breather hose for your crankcase to be able to ventilate. And we are basically all set there besides hooking up the fuel hose. But I'm gonna go ahead and get that other fuel hose all prepped with our new hose filter and shutoff valve. All right, so I just went through and got the fuel valve installed. I cut a small piece with the hose supplied. Then we put in the fuel filter and just used another small piece. Now we can turn the fuel back on, wait for a minute, check for leaks, see if there's anything going on, and then we should be able to crank this right up. All right, and real quick before I crank this up, I wanted to show you guys, if I can get the light on it, um, we've got plenty of clearance on that choke arm. So there's no worries on this application, but just make sure everything clears and everything is functioning. So I will go ahead and turn the choke on just because we have a new carburetor and I heard the solenoid click. So let's crank it.
we'll just let this run for a minute. We're gonna get this oil nice and warm and then we'll get everything prepped to do the oil change on this as well. Everything's set up. I actually have this old oil bottle that I have cut uh, that helps me out a little bit to slide underneath. And once I get the plug out, it'll basically just drain right into my pan out of the spout. It does help some, although it usually still makes a mess anyway. Yeah. It's still making a big old mess, but less mess than uh, it would if you didn't have it. This actually looks really thin, like really thin. So my guess is we were leaking fuel into the crankcase at some point. So it is a really good thing that we're getting this changed out. I'm going to go ahead and let this drain out, uh, get everything wiped down, and then we will take the oil filter off on the other side and get that swapped out as well. And then we'll go ahead and top this off and we should be in pretty good order other than just swapping out the spark plug. Alright, I did a little bit of wrestling with the... Uh, some of my strap wrenches but I had remembered that I actually had a Briggs & Stratton filter socket and yeah, that filter was on there it uh, it actually dented it just taking it off but anyhow I got the old one off and just dipped my finger in and wiped around the o-ring on here and also uh, wiped up a little bit around the ceiling area so we'll go ahead and pop on the new filter here and we're just gonna hand tighten this just snug it down all right and that's plenty has a good o-ring on these so you don't need to get crazy because then the next time you go to service it you're gonna have a heck of a time getting it off we've got that all done I'm just gonna go ahead and top this back off with some fresh oil we're gonna crank it back up make sure everything looks good we don't have any leaks and then we can move on to the mowing deck, but it's going pretty smooth. We are going to be jumping on to the mowing deck now. So on this one, these um, belt covers, they also work as guides to keep the belts on. Uh, we do need to take these off because these spindles are actually going to come upward. We're going to have to take the blades off, but I will show you that here in a bit. I guess the hawk's cruising by yelling at me. But I'm going to go ahead and release that spring. And then what that's going to allow me to do is get the blade brakes out of their groove. And I think I've got everything basically set up here for us to be able to take this all the way apart. Uh, should be 3 8 to take these covers off. covers came off. Go ahead and get this flipped over. You guys can see this thing was, these blades were just absolutely trashed on here. Make sure y'all can see everything. So since our spindles are going to be coming through the top side, um, I've got to get the blades off from here. These should be a 15 16 and then we will have four half inch um, bolts per spindle and i'm not expecting these to come out very easy more than likely they're all going to break uh, they usually do because they just get that corrosion uh, now is also a good time too if you're going to be doing anything like this to go ahead and get this all sanded down and put some rust converter or some kind of uh, undercoat on here to keep your deck from rusting I did just put some penetrant on the top side as well and I just put a torch to all of the bolts just to see if I could get that penetrant to kind of work its way down in there so I've got a breaker bar and a half inch 
So we'll get started on trying to see. Going to want to work these slow if they do come free. So I'm going to keep working at these for a little bit and I will let y'all know if I'm able to successfully get them all out. But the key is with old rusty bolts is if you can get it to start moving, just move it back and forth. Keep putting some penetrant on there. Let that work itself in and eventually normally it'll come out as long as you don't horse it or uh, pull on it too tight. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll get these spindles out. All right. Well, with a little time and patience, I was actually able to get all eight of those out without breaking a single one. So let me get this cleaned up. It's not too bad. There's no cracks or anything like that. Uh, it just has a little bit of rust scale on it. So I will get this cleaned up and we will get some kind of undercoat on here. All right. I went ahead and got this all prepped. And in the meantime, while I was grinding this down, I don't know if you guys can see, there is actually a hole in the deck. I think it was just a thin spot and it seems like this is kind of just where grass collects. I did go ahead and just get a piece of cardboard and cut a template. So I'm just going to go ahead and I've got a small piece of plate steel here. I'm just going to get that patch cut and tack welded into place. I'll show you guys when I get that. And then I've got some rust kill from Magic that we are going to be undercoating this with and then we'll get these spindles on. All right, well I got that undercoat on here. We're going to let this dry for a bit. Show y'all the patch on there as well. But that's all welded up and everything looks good. And for the spindles, uh, these were those 810 spindles. Like I said, they did not come with hardware, so I went and got a few things yesterday. I went and got eight of these 5 sixteenths by one inch grade eight hex cap screws and these threaded in just fine so we're just gonna end up running those in and then I got some of these uh, metal lock nuts these are 5 sixteenths by 18 all right well I got those all the way installed and they look super nice on here uh, everything lined up properly and I was able to get these snugged up and torqued from the bottom and then also with those locking nuts on the top everything feels really solid and these things are buttery smooth so um, they do not come with the nut I uh, just took them off the other spindle and then I just went through and cleaned up the threads on here as well and kind of just scuffed them up with the brush but I am also going to put a dab of some anti-seize on the shaft here. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the blades installed. I'll show you all when that's done. We'll check. We'll give them a few rotations. And then we can go ahead and get this thing back on here and finish up this mower. These things are absolutely buttery smooth. I can't hear a single sound out of that on either side. All right. Well, I'm waiting on that mowing deck to cure up i wanted to show you guys how this is coming along this thing has made leaps and bounds from what it looked like and operating and everything i have gone ahead and cleaned this i get people ask me all the time how do you make it so shiny i normally cut and buff all the machines with a buffer and polishing compound and then i use a thin coat of atf or automatic transmission fluid on a microfiber towel and i wipe everything off it gives the black plastics that shine back to it. <clears throat> um, you normally just want to let it sit on there too and then wipe it back off so you don't have like a thick greasy layer. Uh, but it does kind of restore or rehydrate um, sometimes the paint or the plastics. And generally that's how I do it. Same thing with the headlights. But... I wanted to show y'all everything that I've done on here since yesterday too. You guys know we did all the fuel system, we did uh, the carburetor on here, um, oil change. I did run it for a few minutes yesterday, then shut it back down and recheck it after it had flowed through the oil filter and just topped it off. That was good. We got a new spark plug in, 
I did a valve adjustment on it. I didn't want to show it in this video. I do have some other videos and I will probably show some other valve adjustments in the future, but I did do a valve adjustment on it. It was not very far off. Cleaned the tank a little bit better as far as the outside of it. I put a newer battery. I've been working on getting some batteries charged up and I put a good healthy one in here. Um, also cleaned up the battery terminals, dielectric grease on all the connections. Uh, I actually took the other wheel that was on here and I put a new rim and tire that I had in my pile of wheels and tires that matches the other side and this one is brand new. Just like the other side, still has the little nubs on it and everything. So we have two brand new front rims and tires. Other than that, we're just waiting on the mowing deck. Uh, this did come out really good. I put a coat of some semi-gloss black on it and also kind of just touched up. I didn't want to go crazy on the covers, uh, but I did lightly sand those down, repainted them, but I've got the whole deck painted. I'm going to clean up the overspray on these stickers here and give the chute a little wipe down. You guys can see underneath everything we did earlier. So I am really pumped. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get everything together and we're going to take this thing out for a test ride. See if I can cut maybe a little bit of some weeds or grass over in the back since we're in the off season. And uh, yeah, so I really appreciate you guys staying tuned and let's go put this thing to work. All right, well, don't have much for grass, but I've got a little bit of leaves and some stuff that we can try to mulch up. <coughs> I'm going to just check the engagement of the blades real quick with you guys and then I'll set you on the tripod and we'll do a little bit of mulching. just taking you guys along to check the blade engagement and uh, I forgot to turn the fuel back on so it just cut off on me all right get you guys set up we'll do a couple little laps with it everything feels good though
All right, guys. Well, this machine is running fantastic. So what do we have in this mower? Well, realistically, we've got about $100 in it. Um, obviously, if I didn't have the mowing deck, we would have more invested in it. But uh, that's what helps me keep going is having some of these spare uh, mowers, engines, and things like that. Um, these parts are expensive, so you know if you can come across even a parts machine, uh, you can save yourself a lot of money just by taking what you need off from it. But overall, um, it's running excellent. I don't think there's anything else we need to do on it. I uh, went through basically the whole machine. I mean, it's running, driving, the belts are good, the brakes work, engine's running solid. Um, we've rebuilt the deck on it, fuel system, greased up the steering. I think I did forget to mention earlier, I did grease up the steering. I can't remember if I told y'all or not. Um, battery, I mean, everything on it's solid. New front tires, everything's greased, ready to roll, so... I think this turned out really well. Let me know what you guys think. I think we're going to try to do probably a zero turn on the next video. We are going to be finishing up the Polaris four-wheeler. I've been getting some parts in slowly for that. So I uh, really appreciate y'all sticking with me and uh, coming along for the ride. So we will have some fun stuff coming up. On that note, let freedom ring. Let those small engines sing. I'll see you all in the next one.